feel overwhelmed sometimes? Are you trying to please everyone all the time? Maybe you're experiencing emotional labor. What is that exactly? So we're going to talk about that, what the answer is, and how to manage it. We've got Dr. Karen Gordon here. She's got the answer. To be honest, I didn't even know what it was. Yes. I didn't even know what it was, and it's confusing. Because mm -hmm. you hear of the word emotional labor, I'm like, is that when you're getting pregnant? No. <laughs> All right, so just to kind of clarify. Okay, so the term emotional labor was first coined by the sociologist Arlie Hochschild, and she wrote a book called The Managed Heart. And I want to really clarify with what it is that she coined and then how it's gotten morphed, because how it was first used is not how it's being used actually uh, now. Right. So the way that she actually described it is back in the workforce 30 years ago, it was the work that specifically, this is according to her, that women would do that is unpaid mm -hmm. okay so it's work that you're actually doing uh, that, that you're not getting paid for okay in the workforce so it'd be like the example that she gives is like a flight attendant that actually you're getting your job but you're really also getting paid to kind of making sure that people are feeling good and that their yeah. their emotions are actually you know they're in a good space mm -hmm. but this is work that actually is not getting paid okay so that's how it was first actually started but if you were actually to look at it now it's kind of evolved so the New York Times actually says it's the duties that are expected of you that go unnoticed mm -hmm. Mel magazine says the free and Visible work women do to keep track of the little things of their life. Some people actually call it so like man hand holding. All the things that we tell men to do. This is not my own words. I'm reporting. I'm reporting. I'm the do not. Uh, I'm the messenger. Um, it's like the things that we tell husbands or men to do that they wouldn't actually think of doing them themselves. Right. Okay. So it's kind of morphed now into the family, and it's kind of like spilled over. Got it. Okay, so, so that's, that's sort of the current use of the words uh, emotional labor. And it will be, you know, if it is a same-sex relationship, it is the partner that is doing the unsaid Correct. and unspoken work. Correct. But it's getting done. The birthdays are being planned. The mother-in-law is being right. called. All of these things are being done just automatically yes. because someone magically gets it done. Right. Now, right. what is the difference uh, between emotional labor and, as you call it, mental labor? Mental labor. Okay. So think of it like, um, so we all know what physical labor is, right? Physical mm -hmm. Or you're actually using our body. So mental labor is actually something you're using your brain. Emotional labor, according to how it was, I'm going I'm to describe it the way it was first coined, mm -hmm. is basically you're, you're managing somebody else's emotions or you're trying to help to manage yourself. So now you, there's an emotional um, extra part of the work that mm -hmm. is actually was not kind of part of the package. Okay. So let me give you a couple examples just so we can kind of get our head around it. So if you remind your husband or wife to do chores, yes. is that emotional or mental? That would be, I guess, mental Correct. labor. Correct. It would be mental, okay. But if you're reminding your partner to do chores and now you are feeling anxious about it or resentful and you're now managing yourself and plus you're kind of trying to manage them, is, would that be emotional it's or mental emotional labor? emotional labor. Exactly. Do you see the difference? Mm -hmm. Okay. So just because we're reminding somebody to do something does not make it emotional labor. Right. Okay. So we're just kind of telling somebody to do a job. But if now we're feeling resentful about it or we're having to manage ourselves or their, them, now we've kind of stepped into the line of emotional labor. Got it. And that, okay. and that goes for your children too. It could be Absolutely. your children too. Could be your parents. And it could be else in the workforce or the family life. Right. Both. Okay. And everyone's like, uh, yeah, I can think of a few examples. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So that's kind of how we want to have, I like clear lines. I like yeah, clear me boundaries too. so that we can kind of know kind of what the word is. Yes. Okay. So any other examples you want to throw out there before we get uh, into actionable sure. tips? Sure. Writing Christmas cards. Writing Christmas okay, cards. Okay. So yeah. writing Christmas cards. So if you're writing a Christmas, tell, you know, if you're writing Christmas card, is that a, a mental or emotional labor? That would yeah. be. Uh, writing the cards would be mental labor, yes. and then starting to get pissed off about it is emotional labor. Thank you, girl. She's got it. Right. She's got it. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Got it. Yes. Okay. okay. So I would say, like, yes. I'm on that line doing the gift yes. buying. I'm on the line. Yes. I'm okay. on the line. So yeah, if yeah. I get the full list of everyone that needs a gift, yeah, including yeah, yeah. all the yeah. nieces, and I'm fine. I'll do it. Right. And then if you add one more name to that list, <laughs> it's like, and I have left the all. Now, right. Right. Yeah. Now we've I've snuck into emotional labor yes. all of a sudden. Yes. So it really is. It's a line it's a, that it's everybody has to figure so out for themselves. Just because we're reminding somebody to do something does not necessarily make it emotional labor. Got it. Okay. So that, okay. that's the line we want. We want to know. Okay. Now, if we are ensconced in emotional labor, what yes. can we do to get out of it? Okay. So, well, basically, how, okay. First of all, we have to be aware of this. Okay. That's yep. why, like, the awareness piece I think is really important. Um, the second most important thing I want to really help in terms of managing emotions around this whole topic is we are not responsible for how other people feel. Mm. We are not responsible for somebody else's happiness. We mm -hmm. are not responsible for somebody else's self-esteem. We are responsible for who? Ourselves. Uh, yes! Yeah. Yes! Really? No, really? Yeah, okay. I know, but you 
you can literally say yes, that 50 yes, times. Know. And, and it's hard to get that. I it's know. hard to understand and that and really is, conceptualize it. You know, one of the last shows I did was on anxiety, right? Yes. And this is kind of very kind of similar to this. And one of the best things I ever learned when I was in graduate school is one of my favorite professors said, you are responsible to people. You are not responsible for people. Right. You are responsible to others. You are not responsible for their emotions. Mm -hmm. And that is really, really important for us to manage our own emo emotions, especially when we're tackling this really big topic. Okay. So that's that's the one key you need right the one there. Key. I want everyone Good to stuff, take away Dr. With, yeah. Karen. And I love that. Well, since we're talking about better mental health, let's talk about better health overall and weight loss. It's never a straight line. The ups and downs are all part of the journey, but staying on track, doing the work, and celebrating the wins are really important, too. Take a look. Okay. I have just left Dr. Joey's office, and I'm going to try and make this video without being emotional. And there I go. I don't want to give you guys an ugly cry. <laughs> this past weekend, um, I went shopping for the first time for clothes for me in like a long time and it was great um my husband and my visa might not think so but it was it was so nice to feel good about myself trying clothes on and liking what i saw in the mirror getting out there and running and trying to run consecutive minutes has been very difficult but I've been doing a lot of soul searching on the runs and even running two, three minutes at a time, it really is a humbling experience and it makes you realize you can go further than you think you can. It's uh, been a really busy week for me. I've done some work travel, I've had some really busy work days with some meetings, and I just simply haven't gone to the gym. I know uh, it's an excuse, I know I need to do better, um, but I just haven't been able to make it. I have finally gotten out of the 200s which is a really big deal <laughs> to finally see such a breakthrough that I've been wanting for so long happen I'm so excited I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful and I'm encouraged to keep going and keep pushing through those really hard days here for all of Dr. Joey's recipes, the meal plans, the articles, go to cityline.tv, click on weight loss challenge. Congratulations to all of our challengers. 